uh, yeah, time to do this again. Uh, you may notice that I am significantly more naked in this video than in the last video because it, it, it gets hot in my office. Having nothing to do with re video recording, it's, it just gets hot in here. I don't know. I don't understand it. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> I want to talk about another thing that can be particularly difficult to track down in the plan cache, and that is when uh, you have a parallel query that experiences exchange spills. Now, this query runs for quite a while. I mean, not like <laughs> not like days or anything, but uh, that again. Let's figure that out. This thing ran for about two and a half minutes. Uh, now, again, I, I run this ahead of time recording, and I have the, the plan saved off uh, for the long-running stuff. Um, so I can just bring them up if I'm doing this live, but I'm not always so lucky with the two and a half minutes. Uh, there, there have been times when this plan has run for seven minutes, which would be disastrous if, if I tried to run this, um, if I tried to run this in front of people. So, uh, that's, that's no fun at all. Um, anyway, let's look at this plan and let's talk a little bit about exchange spills and why they happen. Now, one of the most dangerous things <coughs> that you can you, you can do in computers is uh, when you have threads with dependencies on other threads. It is not a good time for anyone. Uh, in this case, um, the dependencies come from ordered inputs. All right. So um, way over to the right in the query, we have <coughs> uh, two index scans. A one and a two, and we have a merge join. Now, merge joins, uh, just like stream aggregates, are one of those uh, one of those uh, operators that requires ordered input from the get-go. You may see SQL Server inject a sort in your execution plan prior to these operators, uh, but in this case, we already have the data in 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 the index order that we need them to be in. So, SQL Server chooses a merge join here because we have. A decent amount of rows going in, and we have it in order. So SQL Server thinks to itself, I will merge this, and this will be very easy. Uh, it also has a similar thought with this join up here. Uh, we will have all the data in order from here going into here, and then from here going into here as well. Uh, where this causes trouble is that the three parallelism operators surrounding this merge join all depend on each other and they all depend on each other sending rows in order here and waiting for those ordered rows and, uh, and other operators waiting on those ordered rows and what we end up with is a whole bunch of uh, rows from the exchange buffers that spill off to disk they don't spill off to disk in the traditional sense that uh, like a hash spill or a sort spill does it's a little bit different it's a lot a bit different but well, we're going to have to leave it there because I don't have five hours of, of video time to explain this. Now, if you look at the spill warnings for these, we don't get a lot of information about the size of data that spilled. Spill level zero and spilled one thread. Now, if you look over here, uh, spill level zero and spilled four threads. And if you look over here, we will have spill level zero and spilled three threads. We don't have any information about the size of data. Um, so... This is all bad news, right? If we look at this plan, we have 30 seconds. Uh, well, let's see. This is again. This is a row mode plan, so the costs are cumul the the timings are cumulative, going from right to left. So by the time we get to this uh, distribute streams operator, uh, we spent let's say just about 28 seconds in here, minus the two seconds. All right, so 30 minus the two 30 seconds here, minus the two seconds there, and then uh, we have about a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, in this repartition streams operator. And then going into this merge join, and then we have two and a half minutes by the time we get up to the gather stream. So uh, this query did not have a good time running. What sucks is that this isn't dependent on parameters. This isn't dependent on, I don't know, really anything at all. It's just It's just bad luck in a lot of cases. And when we look at the cached query plan for this. Let's go into Blitz Cache <coughs> and um, let's focus in on this one particular sort procedure. When we go in and we look at this query plan, it is very difficult to tell what may have taken two and a half minutes. 
All right. I mean, we see some pretty big lines there, uh, and there's you know so certainly certainly some things that we we could think about doing to to make this query better, but there's nothing I think obvious about why this might sometimes take two minutes, sometimes take seven minutes, and then other times finish instantly. If we look over here a little bit, though, in the warning column, um, we see a couple warnings here. We have uh, some spills, and we have uh, the fact that it's a select query that caused writes. And if we scroll a little bit over in Blitzcache's output, uh, we'll see that we spilled quite a bit of data out of there. So we spilled about 2.5 gigs of data <laughs> out to TempDB, which is a great time, right? Woohoo! We spilled 2.5 gigs of exchange buffers. Yay! That sucks. <clears throat> what sucks even more is, again, looking at the query plan, <coughs> there's no obvious indication that the exchange bu that these, you know, exchange operators are what spilled. That there where where we had a lot of trouble doing things. All we see is that uh, we had a big parallel plan, and s for some reason, sometimes it runs for two minutes, and sometimes it runs for seven minutes. And uh, you know what's what's sort of interesting is that the I mean that for it's a parallel plan, and the total CPU is uh, a bit less than the average duration. So that might give us some clues. That's like kind of like one way to figure it out. Um, say that like if you have a parallel execution plan and um, you know, the duration and CPU are equal or the duration is higher than the CPU, then you have an ineffective parallel plan because parallelism is supposed to use more CPU to cut down on wall clock time, like cut down on duration. So here we have kind of the opposite thing happening where we spend, I don't know, like an extra 50, like an extra, actually an extra like minute. <laughs> Uh, of duration over CPU time. So that's one way that you could kind of start picking this apart. But, um, you know, this is, I would say, a, a rather uncommon problem, but it's still something that I felt like I should include in here. Anyway, uh, that's about it for uh, parallel exchange spills. I am going to talk about um, when parallelism operators uh, are troublesome, even without spilling in the next video. So we'll look at an example of that, and I will see you there.